All right, to look into the state of the African National Congress as it edges ever so close to that December conference, we speak now to the University of Johannesburg, Professor Stephen Friedman. Prof, thank you very much for your time. Let's start with uh, the understanding that at least 17 ANC NEC members are vying for the top six positions in that party. If so many people are putting their hands up to say, I can lead the ANC. What does that tell us about the leadership bar in that party? Good morning, Pauli. Um, look, what it actually tells us quite immediately is that there's been a big change in the ANC uh, in the sense that uh, in previous Congresses we've had slates. Uh, there have been two factions and they both put up their slates and the slates have competed. Uh, now the slates seem to have collapsed, which is why you have uh, this uh, profusion of candidates. Uh, you were talking to Pule Maibe. I mean, there are uh, already three candidates, uh, as, as your reporter pointed out, uh, who have been aligned with former President Zuma in the past, competing for, for one position. Uh, and that didn't happen in the past. Uh, so I think what you're seeing now is a uh, you know, the ANC used to have very strict rules about how you could compete, and everybody used to pretend that they weren't really competing. And all of that has collapsed, uh, and, and we now have a bit of a free-for-all, uh, which means that everybody, even if they're in the same faction, competes to be nominated uh, for the same post. It's interesting what you're saying, Prof, that the culture of slates, might the ANC have done away with that? And can we say that definitively, or it's still something for us to watch and see? No, I think it's very much something to watch and see. I mean, nobody's, you know, the ANC has said that they don't want slates, but uh, that doesn't tend to make any difference. Uh, what we are seeing, though, is that uh, the slates are simply collapsing, uh, not because anybody instructed it, but I think because, you know, if you have a restricted system, which the ANC has always had, and you start opening up that system, you can't really com co control where it goes, because once you tell people that they can contest, they'll start contesting. I mean, the other thing which has been happening in this uh, run-up to the conference, which has never happened in the ANC before, is that you have to have people publicly announcing that they're candidates for the National Executive Committee, uh, which has never been part of ANC uh, practice in the past. Mm -hmm. so, so what you're seeing now is, uh, as I say, uh, the genie has come out of the bottle. Uh, my guess is that nobody's going to be able to put it back in again. A quick look at the quality of contestants here, Professor. Do many of them inspire confidence in the eyes of the public? Well, um, <laughs> short answer is we'll see in, 20, we'll see in 2024. Uh, and we're already seeing in by-elections at the moment that, that uh, certainly in some provinces the answer is no. Uh, they would have to earn that confidence. Um, you know, the problem is that although there is uh, a tremendous contest for positions, as we've said, that there is also a sense here that it's the same old faces being recycled. So, I mean, put in my bear, Mzwaneli uh, Messina, uh, I mean, these are not new, fresh names. Uh, these are people who have been around for quite some time. Um, so, you know, I think the voting public is going to have to be convinced that whatever emerges from this conference is new, because we saw in the local elections, uh, and we've seen in the by-elections since then, uh, that voters don't like what they've been given at the moment. Reading an article at the weekend, Professor, written by... Dr. Zamani Sol, who's the chairperson of the ANC in the Northern Cape, he seems to narrow this down to what he calls, and I quote, ideological degeneration. And that's why he says the leadership bar has been lowered in his view. Do you agree with his analysis? Well, it's a very elitist view, you know. It's, I mean, you hear this in the ANC all the time. Uh, there's somehow the idea that somewhere out there there should be a whole bunch of people who've been to the right political school, who's got the right ideas, uh, and who therefore are fit to contest office. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is simply saying, well, if I don't agree with your point of view, you're not educated enough. <laughs> it's not just that we differ. Uh, so in that sense, you know, when he starts talking about ideology, 
Uh, I think that's very difficult because the whole point about democracy is that anybody of any ideology can contest if they want to. Uh, where I think the ANC has a legitimate concern uh, is its constant attempt to filter out people uh, who seem to be joining uh, and, and seeking positions simply because they want to advance themselves and want to enrich themselves and they don't want to serve the ANC or to serve the South African public. Uh, that's a very difficult one to handle, but it's a real problem and it's something that they, uh, they are right to try to address. Uh, but when you start saying that the problem is that people, you know, haven't taken the right political science courses like I have, uh, then you're really uh, telling people that you're not very tolerant of, of people with a different view. Yeah, Prof, let's conclude our conversation, and I want to conclude it with a, a, a general view of how you see things. A new party in Lesotho, we understand, has won a number of seats, although it has not mustered enough majority. In Zambia, Hakainde Hichilema has become the president of that country after being in the opposition uh, for a number of years. Where I'm getting at here, Professor, is that are people getting tired of the political establishment? And do you think that the ANC has reached that moment when you talk about all of these names that we have heard of before, recycled names? You've just said that moments mm. ago, mm. when voters come to a realization that the ANC actually has nothing new to offer in the way of its candidates, do you think that they have now reached that point where they could be voted out? Well, they could. Well, I mean, they certainly could go beyond 50% in 2024. There's no doubt about that. But we are in a different position to Lesotho and Zambia. Some people would argue that they uh, ahead of the curve uh, compared to us. And that is that you're correct to say, and obviously the election results show that, that there is intense disillusionment with the ANC. But there's no real alternative. Uh, and that, you know, and I'm, I'm not talking, of, I'm not passing a value judgment on the other parties. Just remember that uh, in, in, in the last local elections, the ANC got its worst result ever. It was still more than double the vote of the DA and four times the vote of the EFF. So the situation we have at the moment is our voters in this country, the majority of voters, are unhappy with the ANC and they don't see an alternative to the ANC. Uh, and that means that there's a huge hole in our politics uh, for a party which would attract former ANC voters, uh, but it's difficult to form a party, so it may be several years before that party emerges, and before that party emerges, uh, we may have some difficult situations. You know, if we have a general election where the ANC can't get 50% and the opposition parties don't have enough votes to form a government, uh, you know, then we're in dangerous territory. So we're unfortunately in the situation where there's a big gap in our politics for that party which can really compete with the ANC, and until that gap is filled, uh, things are going to be quite unstable. Professor Stephen Friedman is with the University of Johannesburg. Thank you very much for your analysis. Thanks indeed for your time.